Okay, I think we're all set and ready to go. Um, as I mentioned um, at the start, today's webinar has a couple of, of whoops, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong slide. Um, Today's webinar has the objective of really taking this opportunity to um, share some new weaving project resources with everyone. And the resources that we wanted to touch upon today are some new fact sheets that have been developed, um, a new report on screening um, through the NBCC EDP, and also to share with you some of our website updates. Um, and before we kind of dive into those pieces, I just wanted to take a minute to give a quick recap and overview of the Weaving Project in case anybody um, isn't already familiar with the work of the project. Um, the Weaving Project is also known as Weaving Resources for Urban Indian Women's Wellness, and this is a project of the Urban Indian Health Institute. Um, it began in 2007 with funding um, from the CDC through a cooperative agreement, and we are actually in our fourth and final year of funding. Um, this is actually our final week of funding. It comes to a close on September 29th. Um, so this is actually a really great opportunity for us to make sure that um, you have all the information about some of our final resources um, and we can talk to you about some of our next steps and plans for the project. Um, but over the course of the four years, our objective through the Weaving Project has been to support an increase um, in the number of urban American Indian and Alaska Native women who receive uh, breast and cervical cancer screening services. Um, and to accomplish this goal, we've been providing technical assistance to the network of 34 urban Indian health organizations, as well as the 19 state breast and cervical cancer early detection programs um, in the states where the UIHO are located. Um, to provide this technical assistance, we've been doing a range of activities, um, holding webinars like this one, um, developing a number of reports and resources like we'll be talking about today, um, as well as conducting um, customized technical assistance and working with the UIHO and the state programs one-on-one -on -one to support partnerships um, and program capacity. So um, with that, I'm going to um, pass the mic over um, to my coworker, Shelby Wilson, who's going to talk more about our newly um, developed fact sheets. Hello again, everyone, and thank you for attending the webinar. Um, the fact sheets were developed with two objectives. The first to share urban American Indian Alaska Native demographic and self-reported cancer screening information, and the second to share resource information for urban Indian health organizations, state programs, and other agencies. Originally, one aggregate and 19 state-specific fact sheets were developed in 2008, and since that time, updated data have become available, as well as new programs such as the CDC's colorectal cancer control program that may be of interest to agencies serving the urban American Indian Alaska Native communities. The format of the fact sheets has changed, as I just mentioned, from state-specific to region-specific. This grouping allows more data to be reported. We've updated one national aggregate fact sheet, which provides information on urban populations in the 34 UIHO and 100 service area counties. The new region-specific fact sheets were developed for eight regions that are based on the Indian Health Service regions. The data come from three sources, including the American Community Survey, the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance, Surveillance System, which is also known as BRFIS, and the United States Census. As I mentioned a moment ago, we developed eight regional fact sheets that are based on the Indian Health Service regions. As you can see from the map, not all regions are included because only states with one or more UIHO were included. And further, these regions have been modified slightly to allow more data to be reported. Of note, the Aberdeen area includes Wichita, Kansas, which is originally part of the Oklahoma City Indian Health Service area. And Tucson is a region of its own in IHS, but we've grouped it with Phoenix, again, to allow more data to be reported.
The fact sheets are intended for urban Indian health organizations and state audiences. And this slide shows the layout, which is a folded leaflet, and this is standard to all of the fact sheets. The front page reports demographic and cancer screening information by region. The inside section includes resource information on agencies, including the UHO, the CDC National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program, the CDC Colorectal Cancer Control Program, the CDC Comprehensive Cancer Control Program, as well as the Susan G. Komen for the Cure Affiliates. And the back page provides additional information on the UIJO, the Urban Indian Health Institute, and the Weaving Project. And these are available online to be downloaded. Okay, I'm gonna pass the mic now to Meg, who's going to describe the process of the screening report. Hi, everyone. So the new screening report that we have developed is, um, we want to give you a little preview of it here today on our webinar, and then Jesse's going to show you where it's posted on the website where you can download it. So the purpose of this, um, the new National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program screening report is to provide programs with easy access to screening data that's really that's specific to urban Alaska Indian uh, American Indian and Alaska Native women so that this data can be used to inform their program de um, development efforts. It's also um, going to help us monitor and evaluate the Weaving Project success. And this update was also done because there's new data available. We have two more years to add. 2009 and 2010 have been added to this current report. And it's also an update, uh, it, we also updated the data for 2006 to 2008 based on the CDC's um, data update process. So a little bit more about the report. The data source is the CDC's, this report uses the data from the CDC's minimum data elements or MDE data. MDE data is information that states are required to submit to the CDC for all the women screened through the state um, breast and cervical cancer early detection programs. This report includes the number information on the number of women who received clinical breast exams, mammograms, pap tests, or any screening service. As I mentioned, the data this, this report is um, covers the years from 2006 through 2010. And the 2006 data represents the baseline data prior to the start of the Weaving Project. And um, 2010 um, is the most recently available data. So 2011, I think, comes out in a little bit later this year. So this is what we have available at this time. So the next um, slide, who is included in this report? Well, the eligibility criteria for the women to receive the uh, National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program services are those women who are uninsured or underinsured at or below 250% of poverty level, women between the ages of 18 and 64 for cervical screening, and women between the ages of 40 to 64 for breast screening. Another thing that's important to note when, repeating the, when reading this report is that it is reporting on urban populations only. And what we mean by urban um, defined here is that it's the service area counties of the urban Indian health organizations. The number of service area counties varies by UA, UIHO, and all 34 UIHO combined serve a total of approximately 100 service area counties. This report does not include any women who are screened th through um, non-breast and cervical education, uh, early detection program funds, for example, the Susan G. Komen for the Cure screening services, or women who are screened through any of the tribal uh, programs in the state. So these reports provide part of the screening picture, but they don't paint the entire picture altogether of the women, number of women screened. From the minimum data element data, we developed of 20, a, a total of 20 reports. 
there is one aggregate national report and 19 state-specific reports. The distribution of the aggregate report will be sent to all state um, program or breast and cervical cancer early detection program directors and also all the UIHO executive directors. It's available publicly on the website and can be downloaded. The distribution of the state-specific report is limited to the state uh, breast and cervical cancer early detection program directors and to the state um, UIHO executive directors only. So that report is the distribution uh, is restricted, and that's due to our data sharing agreements. So we wanted to give you a little preview of the data that's in the report, and so here is table one. But I know it's really difficult to look at a table with a lot of information in a format like this. So we're going to go to the next slide, which gives you another re re representation of it. Um, and this data shows that for any of the screening uh, for the any of the screening services reported by urban American Indian Alaska Native women over the time period. There's additional figures that you'll find in the report that show similar charts for each of the individual services. And as you can see, the percent of American Indian Alaska Native women who received screening services through the National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Programs has remained relatively constant over the five-year period between 2006 and 2010. Economic, programmatic, and other environmental factors may influence the changes year to year in the number of American Indian Alaskan Native and also total women screen. Some of these changes may take additional time to be reflected in the screen data itself. Overall, the data illustrate an ongoing need and opportunity for providing additional services to urban American Indian Alaska Native women which can be supported and expanded through continued outreach to and partnership with urban American Indian Alaska Native communities. Next, I want to turn over the presentation to Jesse Folkman, who has been involved with the U, uh, UI, the Weaving Project from the startup, and she's going to tell uh, you about the website and the next steps. Thank you, Meg. Okay, um, over the course of the last four years, you know, we've been working with a very geographically um, dispersed audience. Um, the UIHO are located all across the country, as are the state breast and cervical cancer programs. And so um, the Weaving Projects website was a really valuable resource for us. Um, to use as a way to get information out to everybody, um, to post our reports and other materials that we've developed and have it um, as an easily accessible um, kind of portal that people can access. Um, as we've been coming to the end of our project period, we um, wanted to make sure that we had the website situated in a way so that it was sustainable and that it was easily accessible to people um, beyond the project period because I think a lot of these resources will still be um, very valuable and helpful and we want to make sure that people can continue to access them um, in the months and the years to come. So one of the things that we've done is we've actually updated our website and we've moved it into a new location. Um, and again, we're still relying on the website as a means for us to um, kind of post and share resources, um, to have information on our past webinars, and also to be a way that people can um, submit technical assistance requests to us that they may have. Um, as the UIHO Tribal Epidemiology Center, it's really important to us and it's a high priority to respond to technical assistance and data requests that we receive. Um, so on the slide here, you'll see the new URL to the Weaving Project website. Um, the old one will automatically redirect you to the site. Um, so if it's already bookmarked and you forget to update it, um, don't worry, you'll still get to this to our new website. Um, right now, I think the update is in process. So um, for the next hour, you may not get redirected, but um, by this afternoon, everything should be running smoothly. Um, I also just wanted to make note of um, the URL, the second one, which is just www.uihi.org. 
where you can go to join our the UIHI's listserv. Um, if you're not already on this listserv, um, this is a really excellent way for you to get updated information, not only on webinars um, or conference calls that the UIHI might be hosting, but it's also a great opportunity to get um, information on grants that may be of interest, of newly re released reports, um, either coming through the UIHI or through other agencies, um, and other information that may be of interest to agencies that are serving urban American Indian and Alaska Native communities. Um, so when you join this listserv, you will receive a weekly um, resources and opportunities email. It goes out every Monday morning um, on the dot. It's a really um, nice and efficient way to get a lot of information in one email. So if you're not already on this listserv, I would definitely encourage you um, and invite you to join. But back to the website. <laughs> um, this next slide shows you a screenshot of our new homepage for the Weaving Project. And what I would like to do is um, actually walk you through the website for just a few minutes so that um, everybody is kind of familiar with where to go to find um, information and resources. Um, so if I could just ask for your patience for a couple of seconds while I link in to um, the website and then we can kind of navigate it together in real time. Okay. Can everybody see um, the website on their screen right now? It may take a minute or a couple seconds for it to kind of appear. Is anybody not seeing the website? How about now, is, is there anybody who's seeing this? Yeah, it's coming. I can see it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Thank you. I didn't want to walk through the website if, um, in case everybody had a blue screen. <laughs> so great. Um, so this is our Weaving Project homepage um, with some background on the Weaving Project. Um, if you see to the right, there's a sidebar where you can access information on the history of the project, um, objectives of the project, um, information on our advisory council, um, information on the artwork. This is a lot of the same information that has been on the previous version of our website. But if you look to the left, um, this is really the area that you'll want to go to to navigate to different subpages. Um, if you have a request for technical assistance or you have a request for um, data, this will take you to the correct uh, website page eventually. It looks like it may need to be um, updated a little bit, so I apologize for that. Um, the activities and events is where you'll find information on the webinars. So you see here that we have archived webinar information. Um, so as it becomes available, we'll be posting um, PowerPoint presentations um, or recordings of archived webinars on this tab. Um, possibly the tab that is of um, most interest to people is our project materials tab. So if you click on here, you'll see that there's several different subgroups. We have reports and other publications. So this is where you'll find um, the CDC screening report that Meg um, just presented on, as well as our past reports and publications that came out over the past few years. Um, our communication materials, so this is our project brochure and some of the um, materials that we developed to um, let people know about the weaving project. We have our recipes, which, sorry about that, it looks like some of these pages aren't quite linking up. Um, but the recipes page will have all of the one-page um, recipe documents. Um, and for those who aren't familiar with the recipes, these are basically step-by-step -step guidelines on how to do different outreach 
um, and recruitment activities, um, different activities for program development and evaluation. Um, and these can also be accessed as one complete document in our reports and other pu publications section. Um, then we have our fact sheets section, and this is where you'll find each of the fact sheets that Shelby um, presented on. And again, we have our national aggregate here at the top, and then below our fact sheets for each of the, um, the regions um, right below. So each open up to a PDF file. Um, and again, our population distribution maps, which came out um, last year, just showing um, the population distribution for each of the 19 states with Urban Indian Health Organization. Um, we have our Contact Us link, which will take you to information on how to contact me and also how to reach the main desk here at the UIHI. And then finally, in our links and other resources, we have information on um, basically links to each of the Urban Indian Health Organizations and the agencies that um, may be of interest to those organizations. So for example, um, if you click on Flagstaff, it will take you to the Flagstaff Urban, Urban Indian Health Organization website on our, on our um, UIHI page. And here you can find information on their local health department, on um, their state breast and cervical program, their comp cancer program um, for the state of Arizona, as well as a link to the Urban Indian Health Organization itself. Um, I also, I, I, I can't um, not give enough credit and enough thanks and recognition to um, Sarah Simpson, who's the project assistant here at the UIHI, and she is the one who um, developed this website and really did a phenomenal job. Um, so I want to recognize her for her hard work on that. Um, and we hope that this website will be a very um, easy to use resource for you to continue to access um, for the months to come. And we'll be continuing to update things like um, links or other resources as they become available. Um, but we wanted to make sure that these resources were easy to access and well integrated into um, some of the other resources that have been developed through the Urban Indian Health Institute. Okay, so one more um, technical pause while I switch back over to our um, PowerPoint slide. Do I do stop share? Um, again, just a quick technology check. Does everybody see the PowerPoint slide again in front of them? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, I do have one more um, slide about our next steps and our lessons learned, but I know that we've gone through a lot of materials at this point um, between the fact sheets and the screening reports and the website. And so I just wanted to take a pause and open it up for questions. If anybody had questions for us about um, any of the materials that we've shared today. And um, just as a side note, while, while these the aggregate report for the um, screening report is available to be downloaded from the website, as are the fact sheets. Um, we will be mailing out hard copies um, later this week to um, the Urban Indian Health Organizations in the state um, breast and cervical program. So um, you should also be expecting um, hard copies of those in the mail as well. Okay, um, and then finally, I just wanted to talk, take a few minutes to talk about um, some of the lessons learned and next steps up here at the Urban Indian Health Institute and um, kind of specific to the work around the weaving project. Um, it's been a really exciting and I think successful four years of the weaving project. And as we've been approaching um, the end of this funding period and um, our overall funding, we've really been focusing a lot on sustainability and accessibility to make sure that 
um, all of the resources that have been developed um, remain accessible um, to people and uh, people remain aware that they're here for them and that we're here for them to help with, um, you know, data requests and things like that. And the website is really a um, important tool for us um, in order to make sure that those things are available. Um, through the, at the UIHI, the work of the Weaving Project has been really instrumental um, in developing a framework that has involved um, an informed future program uh, project planning. Um, the, the framework of providing technical assistance between organizations, um, of really taking um, the priority to highlight the successes that are going on at other urban Indian health organizations as well as state programs. I think those have been really key highlights of the Weaving Project that have transferred into other projects um, of the Urban Indian Health Institute. Um, and the work of the Weaving Project has also influenced and kind of overlapped with some other cancer prevention efforts that are going on um, and that the UIHI is involved with. Um, one of those, and some of you on the call are already familiar with this, um, is the work of the group called Urban Indian CARES. Um, CARES stands for Colon and Rectal Education and Screening. Um, this is a group that has membership from different urban Indian health organizations. Um, in the past, it's also had representation and membership from state um, health departments as well as other national organizations. Um, and Urban Indian Care as a group has, over the course of the years, done um, kind of background work to um, inform what type of messaging is needed for um, colorectal cancer education and to promote screening. Um, from that work, they've developed a number of different um, resources, including postcards and posters and fact sheets um, to encourage um, colorectal cancer screening in urban Indian communities. Um, and the work of um, Urban Indian Cares continues on, and I think it's been um, a really um, interesting um, time, especially over the past couple of years, where you know when when Urban Indian Health organizations and states are interested in addressing breast and cervical cancer, it makes a lot of sense to be addressing colorectal cancer as well. Um, and so I'd encourage you to. Um, also be involved if you're interested in the work of Urban Indian Cares, um, and there's materials from that group on the website as well. Um, and the Weaving Project has been a wonderful opportunity for us to expand relationships not only with um, Urban Indian Health Organizations and the State Breast and Cervical Programs, but with other national organizations. Um, I think everybody is really dedicated to um, serving the needs of the urban Indian community and providing um, excellent care, and um, it's just been a fantastic um, last four years to work with everybody um, on those efforts. So with that, I know we are um, a little bit ahead of schedule, but um, this last slide shows you the contact information for myself as well as for Shelby and Meg. Um, it again lists our new URL for the website. Um, as well as the URL for the UIHI website. Um, and I encourage you to visit both for a number of resources and reports that may be helpful to your agency. Um, again, I'll open it up for questions in case anyone has any questions, but um, I also want to thank everyone for their time in participating on today's webinar and just encourage you to please contact us if you have any questions or if there's any way that we can be of assistance. So any last questions before we close for the day? Hey, Jesse, this is Jamie from Pure Urban Indian Health. Hi. I was just wondering if we would be able to get um, the Sioux Falls and Aberdeen sites uh, web, web pages listed under South Dakota also? Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, if you send us the URLs, we can make that adjustment on our website. Yep, I will do that. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay, well, again, I thank you all for your time and participating on today's call. I know everybody's extremely busy, and Mondays are um, especially busy for many, so we appreciate your time. Um, we are looking forward to mailing out a lot of the resources that we've talked about today, and um, we also invite you to kind of explore the new website and um, download anything that may be of interest. Um, and again, thank you so much. I hope you have a great week.
Um, oh, I'm sorry, before I go, um, we do have an evaluation for the, um, for the webinar. When you close out of this window, it will automatically redirect you um, to a brief evaluation survey. Um, we'll also be sending a follow-up email in just a few minutes with um, the link to that evaluation. So in case um, you aren't able to complete it um, as you're logging out, you'll have a second opportunity to do so. And we really appreciate any feedback you can provide us because we're always working to um, improve our webinars and we want to make sure that they're as um, applicable and useful to you as they possibly can be. So thank you again. Have a great week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. Baker's American Indian.